my life is blessed. It's no more a mess. Now everything I touch, everything I touch now turns to success. If you believe that, I want you to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. And welcome everybody that's joining us live and online, Facebook and YouTube. We're so glad to have you with us. And, you know, we believe that this word, this message is just as much for you today as it is for each and every one of us. So really pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. We believe your life will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to meditate in your word. Your word, O oh God, it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask you today, help us, God. Some of us don't really know what we're going to do. We're in situations, circumstances that are literally beyond our control. We came today not just out of tradition, not just because this is the right place to be, but we came because we need you, God. We need you to help us. And so we know that you send your word to heal us and to deliver us out of all of our trouble. By faith, we receive this word to us in Jesus' name. And I'll agree with that prayer said, amen. amen. I want you to turn with me in your Bible to the book of John chapter 6. I want to read from verse 1 through verse 13 as I deliver a message to you that came to me through the night and into the morning on Friday this past week. I'll call it, give it to God. But we're going to talk about God turning your not enough into more than enough. Have you ever been there where what you had was not enough? It wasn't enough for you. It wasn't, you know, it seemed like the relationships that we have in life that what I have is not enough for them. What they have is not enough for me. On the job have a job, but it's not enough job to take care of what needs to be taken care of. With that in mind, I want you to find yourself and hear this word in John chapter 6. In verse 1, after these things, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain and he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude toward, coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered and said to him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them. That every one of them may even eat a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But it's not enough. What are even these among so many? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, and the number was about 5,000. Jesus took those loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to his disciples, to those that were sitting down. Likewise, he did it with the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled and had eaten, to, they were full. He said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered up them and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves and were left over by those 
who had eaten. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Have you ever been there where what you had wasn't enough? Like it was in that day. You didn't have enough money. Even what you did have wouldn't be enough to do what you want to do, or what you feel like you got to do. Have you ever been in that place where you didn't even know what to do with what you had, which wasn't enough to do what you had to do? You didn't even know what to do with what you had. I believe my assignment today is to show you from the word of God what to do when what you have is not enough. Why? Because if you let him, if you give it to him, he can take what's not enough and literally turn it into more than enough. Are you all ready for this word today? Now, uh, I'm extremely excited about this, and um, uh, the, the person that's over our momentum team, Sister Adrian, she's here on the front row. On Thursday, she sent me a message from Bishop Jakes by YouTube. The title of the message was More Than Enough. Now, what was exciting about this is that on last Sunday, I just preached that God is God of abundance. And that because life and death is in the power of our tongue, that we can choose not just life, but choose abundance. Because God is God of abundance. He is God who is more than enough. So when I saw that Bishop Jakes was on the same subject, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> we run, see, Bishop Jakes and I, we run with the same Holy Spirit. I tell you, I, I, I just was going to click on it to see what direction that he was going on in that message. And I stayed up for an hour from like 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. watching that message. When I woke up the next day, this message that I'm preaching to you this morning, which I believe is a prophetic word because God knows the situation that you're in. He knows that what you have isn't enough to do what's got to be done. And he sent me to tell you today that if you release it, if you let him use it, if you give it to him, he will take that which is not enough and turn it into more than you need. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, I was reading my chapter, and Deuteronomy 30 was one of the chapters that we read. And I had been preaching on Deuteronomy 30 for about four weeks, but I hadn't noticed this one particular verse. We had just that week talked about, last week, talked about God of abundance. And I was reading my chapter this week, and I saw this verse. I couldn't help but to bring it back to you today. I didn't say this before, but it's here. It was there all the time. The Lord God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. That ought to make you Excited. That ought to stir you up because why? God's saying he wants you to abound. And where you haven't been able to abound and have more than enough in your life, he said if you give it to him, he will make you abound. He'll make you be at the place where you've got more money than you need or more peace than you need or more calmness in relationship than you need or more job than you need. Come on, somebody. He can make you abound in every, I mean, he's listening, in the fruit of your body, in the increase. Come on, how many of y'all see? God wants you to live a life of abundance. Amen. I was also reminded to show you from the word that we serve this God as Ephesians 3 and 20. I know some of you, that might be your favorite scripture. But it went off on me like a bomb on the inside of me to give to you, to remind you that we serve God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I need to remind you of the God that we serve. He is more than enough. 
What's unique about this verse is that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above. In other words, he can do it, but how do you get him to do it? In other words, you've got to give it to God in order for him to do that which is exceeding abundantly above all. So it's so important for us to learn three things today. We've got to learn to release it. Whatever it is that you're holding on to, that's not enough. You've got to release it. Let it go. It's not enough anyway. And you all like, no, this is mine. <laughs> I need to show you how to let God use what you have. And how when you let him use it, he'll turn it more than And then, of course, how to give it to him, and he'll turn it to more than enough. Now, there's a verse of scripture talking about release it. The Bible talks about an individual who scatters and yet increases more. They don't withhold what they have. They scatter it. They let it go. They give it out. Come on. They let others use it. And as a result, it increases more. But there's also the kind of person who withholds. Y'all do know withholdings, right? There's the kind of person who withholds more than is right and that tends to poverty. You know, on our paychecks, there's a little section to talk about withholdings. They're going to hold this back from giving it to you. And what I want to share with you from the word today is that in order for God to take your not enough and turn it into more than enough, there are going to be certain things in your life that you need to loose and let go. There are going to be certain things that you need to release and give to God. Amen? Amen. Verse 25 says that the generous soul, the person that's generous, that is not stingy, I mean stingy, <laughs> the generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters also will be watered himself. Amen. Amen. There was a passage in, the, in, in 1 Kings chapter 17 that perfectly illustrates how God can take your not enough and bring you into a place of having more than enough. But it illustrates that in order to get to that place of not having enough, that you've got to let go of what you got in order for him to make it more than enough. What's also interesting about this passage is that in 1 Kings 17, even though we're going to look at, a, look at a particular woman that had something and what she had wasn't enough and God was about to turn it and make it in more than enough, that even in the context, God was able to take the prophet of God who also was in a situation of not having enough who was then taken into a place of having just enough. Have you ever been there where you had just enough money to make it through this month or just enough money to get through this week or just enough money to pay all the bills and you didn't really have anything left over? Well, if you've ever been in that place, just like the prophet was, God took him not only from having not enough to a place of not, not just having just enough to a place where he had more than enough. Word of the Lord came to Elijah in chapter 17 and verse 1, told him to prophesy that there wouldn't be any rain on the earth, not just in a specific area, by the space of according to his word, and it was three and a half years without rain. Well, you know, if it stops raining, I mean, has it been as it is in Houston? You know, this past week, we didn't have much rain, and the, and the temperatures were really hot, hot, hot. All of a sudden, our lawns went from plush green to stressed yellow. Like, oh, man, I need to water the yard or water the plants. What's going on? Well, it's just hotter than normal. There's, there's, not, there's not enough rain, and so we need to subsidize it. And even with the irrigation, it's not enough water. And so now the grass is stressed. It's struggling to be productive, and it's the same in our lives. But we don't have enough. I'm here to tell you God will take you from that place. Also, what happened was he told him, he said, now, I know you prophesied. Now, there's a famine for everybody, including the prophet. But God took him, and he said, go, I want you to go down to the brook, and there's going to be some birds that bring you some food in the morning and some birds that bring you some food in the evening, and, they're, and you're going to be able to drink out of the brook. Well, sure enough, in the morning, there was a bird, gave him something to eat. Wow, that's strange. God knows how to get what you need to you. Come on, somebody. 
At night, he had just enough, but he didn't give him lunch for the week. Come on, he didn't bring groceries. He just gave him enough for that day. What's happening? God knows how to get to you what you need. Don't be moved by what you see, even though you don't have it right now. Why? Because he knows how to get to you what you need. But then God told him when the brook dried out, he says, all right, I want you to go down to this certain city. I want you to find a widow. I've given her instructions to provide for you. That's strange in and of itself. Being taken care of, I mean, after all, not just a woman, but a widow. I mean, I ought to be trying to help her. He had to humble himself. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of us need to let go of our pride so that he can turn our not enough into more than enough. Sure enough, he went down and he saw this woman. Man, that, that's got to be that woman. He told me there would be a woman there. And sure enough, he said, uh, would you go and make me something to eat? Um, you know, I, I, I'm hungry. And, 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 uh, and give me something to drink. And this is at a time of famine. She said, matter of fact, in verse 12, we just show you. She said, as the, as the Lord God lives. Now, you know, when you start, I swear for God, if you, <laughs> is that just where I came from? When you start calling on the name of the Lord, all he asked was for something to eat. And she swear for God. As, as the Lord God lives, notice what she says. I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm, a, I'm gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son so that we may eat it and what? Die. die. She's thinking about dying. Why? Because they're in a time of famine. And even what she has, in her opinion, is not enough. Like it was for the disciples, this is, we got something, but it ain't enough. I'm here today to preach to those who have been in that situation, are in that situation, where what you have is not enough. What am I saying to you? Like the prophet said, give it to God. and He'll take that which is not enough and turn it into more than enough. And that's exactly what happened for this woman. He said, no, go and make this cake for me first because I've got a prophetic word that that little jar of flour and that jar of oil is not going to run out until rain comes back on the earth, praise God. Sure enough, she went and did according to the, what the man of God said. She believed the preaching, praise God. She took what, what she had and she released it. She gave it to God. Come on, somebody. And as a result, the Bible says she dipped out and made that cake and gave it to him. And there was still some flour in there. So she dipped out and made something for her. And then she said, well, yo, this is, this is good because we still got flour. She dipped out some more and made it for her family members in her household. What's going on? God is taking that which was not enough and turning it into more than enough. Why? Because that's kind of God we serve but you got to release it you holding on to it you got to let it go another situation this is a totally different prophet a totally different woman God sent him to her and sure enough he or, or she came to him God gave him a word he asked her he says well what, what do you want me to do for you tell me what do you have in the house? This woman was about to lose her kids because she couldn't pay her debts. Her husband had died and left them in debt, got two sons, and the creditors came to take away. It's one thing for your car to be repossessed, but it's another for them, for them to take your kids. Some of you are like, well, you know. <laughs> About right now, it wouldn't be so bad. They're eating me out of the house at home. You, you start to invest. Well, you know, would that settle us up? I mean, you know. <laughs> and he asked her a question. And I want you to show that in her mind, what she had wasn't enough. He said, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. He said, go borrow some vessels. And as the word of the Lord came, 
they filled up vessel after vessel, and God took her not enough and turned it into more than enough. If he did that for her, he will do that for you. But in order for you to have that, you've got to release what you've been holding on to. Some of you need to let go of your past failures. The thing that's keeping God from being able to turn your not enough into more than enough is all the mistakes that you have made. Some of you need to let go not just of your past failures, but things that have happened to you that you've been holding on to, that have been hurting you. And because you won't let it go, God can't come in and do for you what he's done for others. In order to have him do for you, you've got to give it to him. Amen. You know, when the Bible talks about giving, it shall be given. You know, it, it, it also says before that, judge and you shall not be judged. Right? Give and it shall be given. Forgive. And God will forgive you. In another passage of scripture, in Mark chapter 11 and verse 24, Jesus says, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Is that right? In other words, if you're in a situation where you don't have enough, then go to God and ask him for what you want and he will give it to you. Amen? Amen. But it doesn't stop at verse 24. He also says in verse 24, and while you're there praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Let it drop, leave it, let it go in order that your father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings, shortcomings, and let them drop. So right at the end of you praying for what you need, which what you have is not enough, he says, I also need you to release that unforgiveness that you've been holding on to. Yeah, Lord, I need more money, but you holding on to what they did, what they said, what happened to them, the betrayal that took place. And all the while, you're preventing God from doing in your life what he is able to do. Somebody say, you got to release it, and you got to let it drop. You got to let go of that unforgiveness. I remember an illustration told by a great preacher of God uh, about, you ever, about, anybody ever heard of a bear hug? Well, sure enough, there was a story of a bear that stumbled into a camp in a pot of something, you know, obviously trying to eat something, found out that it was hot, and because it was alarmed by it, he grabbed it and held on to it. Man, this is a burning hot pot, and sure enough, the more it hurt him, the harder he held on to it, and it's destroying him. That's exactly what you and I do when people say stuff to us that hurts. We hold on to it. We rehearse what they said. We bring it up. We think about it. What are we doing? We're holding on to what they did and preventing God. In order for God to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask and think, you really have got to release it. You've got to let it go. Let it drop. Somebody say, let it drop. Let it drop. Hallelujah. Amen. The second thing is, you got to let them use it. Last week, we talked about the disciples. Peter and his brother were on a ship. Jesus was on the shore preaching to a multitude. He figured that it would be better if I could stand in the ship and preach to the multitude. So he asked Peter to use his ship. What am I saying? Let him use it, and he'll turn your not enough into more than enough. As the story goes, he told him, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But here's the thing. Peter said in verse 5, Simon Peter answered and said to him, Master, we have worked all night and have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Have you ever been there where you've worked really hard and what you had was still not enough to do what you had to do or needed to do? Amen. Where you've worked really, really hard and still didn't have nothing to show for. it. You got your income tax return and now it's June and you still, you're like, man, what happened? Now? <laughs> nothing to show for. I'm here to tell you that if you let God use it, he will turn what wasn't enough to be more than enough. 
sure it was in Peter's life. He went and he let God use his boat. He let down that net and he caught more fish than that net could hold. The net broke. They started filling up the boat that they were in with fish. That wasn't enough. They called a second boat for their partners. Filled up that boat was more than enough. How did he get that? He let God use him. And for us, what we have, if we're in that situation where it's not enough, let God use you. Let him use your money. Let him use your talents. Let him use your time. And he will turn what's not enough into more than enough. Amen. Can y'all take a little bit more of this? Amen. There's the same similar situation where folks were working really, really hard. You know, in an agricultural society, when you, con when you crank up the combines to go out and plow and, and the, 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 the tractors and all that kind of stuff to go out and sow seed, that's work. Well, he's writing to an agricultural society. He said, hey, you've worked real hard, but bring in little. Hello. <laughs> you ever been there where what you had after you worked wasn't enough? And sure enough, you eat, but it's not enough. I mean, it's right here. You don't have enough. You drink, and that's, you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but nobody's warm. You earn wages, work real hard, but you earn wages to put it in a bag with hosts. Hello. Am I talking to anybody here today? What's going on? You don't have enough, and you're working really hard. I mean, he could just keep it. You know, you, you got a house, but it ain't enough. You got a car, but it ain't enough. You're in a relationship, and they're they not enough. Come on, somebody. Is he describing somebody that we might know? And what is he saying by saying it? He challenged them in verse 7. He said, consider your ways. What I'm challenging you is that when what you have is not enough, if you let God use it, he will take that which isn't, which isn't enough and turn it into more than enough. Amen. When you let God use your tithes and your offerings, to do the work of his kingdom, he'll take that and cause you to have more than enough. Amen. In Matthew chapter 27, or chapter 25 and verse 27. Of course, there was this time, and Jesus, of course, instructing his, his disciples, he tells them, uh, which of you, uh, well, he said, it, uh, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that has gone to a far country and he's delivered unto men their talents. To one he gave five talents. You all know the story. To another two, another one. And the one that had five, let God use it, and it multiplied into another five. Then he gave to the other that two, he put it to use. And God took that which was two and multiplied it into four. Then there was a guy who didn't use what God gave him. Didn't let God use his talents or his ability. And he gave it back to God saying, here, you can have what's yours. He didn't let God, he didn't give it to God. Well, sure enough, in Matthew 25, 27, God said to him, you oughtest, therefore, to have put my money to the exchanger. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. What is that teaching us? Let God use what you have, and he will turn your not enough into more than enough. Are you getting this today? Put it to use. Some of you are extremely gifted. Are you using your talents and your abilities in service for the kingdom of God? As we have opportunity to give back to God, doors will open that you can't even imagine. But if you hold on and be stingy, even with your gift, when you don't let him use your boat to preach the gospel, then you prevent what could be from being. Amen? I close as we open in John chapter 6. I want you to get this story and this illustration. Jesus, knowing in his heart what he would do, he asked Philip a question. He's asking you this question today. Where can we buy meat that these can eat? Simon, uh, Philip's first answer was, even if the money that we had, it wouldn't even be able to feed a few. In other words, his answer was, we don't have enough, in his opinion. 
we don't have enough. I, I, don't, I don't see this in the scripture, but I believe, I, I try to go there and I imagine what, the, what, what this was in real life. Jesus is sitting there with his disciples and a multitude comes and they're coming to him. And so people are gathered all around him as far as he can see. And he's asking the disciples this question, testing them. And he knows he's getting ready to do something miraculous in your life. But he needs something to work with. So he starts to engage and to conversate with people. Are you going to hold on to this? Are you going to let that thing, that hurt go? Are you going to forgive that person so that I could do something miraculous in your life? Sure enough, there was a little boy. Had to be. I don't see it in Scripture, but I believe this is how it went down. Something like this. The little boy hears Philip's remark. Well, we don't have enough money to buy this. And the little boy is like, well, you can have my lunch. Andrew, Peter's brother, hears this little boy. Uh, he's just a little boy. He don't know no better. He probably kind of pipes up, well, I mean, even if there's a kid here that's got a lunch, but that's not enough to God, that was all he needed. In his eyes, it wasn't enough. How do you see what you have right now? Do you see it as valuable? This is just what God needs because he can take this little thing and make it to be more. That little boy gave that lunch he gave it to God, and God was able to bless it, break it, and it multiplied to the point where he kept pouring, and the cup ran over. You all know how we are when we go to an all-you-can-eat buffet? Even if you don't go to an all-you-eat buffet, but you're there at the restaurant, and you pay for it, so you feel like under obligation to eat everything. You know, good and well, you ain't even going to eat the leftovers. You're not even the kind to eat the leftovers, but you're going to not leave the left. Or you're not going to leave your plate half full, you know, because, like, I paid good money for that, and I'm just going to have to eat all of this. So you, you busting at the seam. Come on. Y'all help me now. Don't leave me out there like that. You done ate too much. Why? Because you paid for that. Gorged yourself. These folks sat there and ate until they were full. He didn't give them just enough. A little snack basket. He had them eat until they were full and overflowing. And then he sent those disciples out with baskets. He said, that so there's nothing's wasted. Like I said, God never wastes anything. He, he pours and it runs over. It's intended to be a blessing to somebody else. He said, collect it so that nothing is lost. And when they had collected it, not just five and two, twelve baskets. My question to you today is, will you let God take your not enough and turn it into more than enough? Did you all get anything out of this? Thank you for being a part of this today. In Jesus name. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Hallelujah.